All right, welcome back. I have yet another free pattern for you today. I, I really think I need to slow it down on the projects because this is just, there's too many things to sew. <laughs> All right, but um, as promised, I told you that I have my own oven mitt pattern and I think it works amazing. And so that's why I'm gonna share it with you today. It's free on my website, no hoops to jump through. Um, and I will tell you that the one major thing the Closet Core free pattern has on mine is that theirs is really fast and easy to sew. Mine's not hard, but there are a lot of pieces and it's a little bit more involved. But the thing is you get a really well-fitting oven mitt. It comes in three sizes and it is really, really safe. And so I don't know about you, but I feel like oven mitts are always gigantic and they don't fit our hands very well. And this one, you know, it's like a little clamshell. So it fits on your hand with a little bit of elastic. There's even this seam, which means it's contoured there. So it's more ergonomic. Like I over-engineered this thing and then I dialed it back. So it could even be even better. Um, it has a little loop to hang it up there. You can kind of see it there. Um, I have one where I made like a little straight piece with a magnet in it. So it sticks to my um, toaster oven. Great. So I've even made these where um, we had purchased some oven mitts that were like Cuisinart or something. I don't know, like one of those big kitchen brands. And it had all these um, beads of like a silicone, like running across. It looked like looked like someone taking a hot glue gun <laughs> and made stripes on it. Um, and they were huge. They were huge for me and my husband. We just didn't use them. And so I took the binding off of that, which was literally four stitches per inch. Like it was so easy to take it off. It took me two seconds. And then I used all the parts of that oven mitt because they weren't cheap. And I made my own. I've since run out of all those materials, but I used the same material inside. And then I used that little silicone thing on the underside, the part that goes against the pot. And so without further ado, here is my oven mid pattern. So there's four p pattern pieces. Um, there is this, my, mine aren't labeled, sorry. These are the, the original pattern pieces. And so these right here, this is the, the back of the hand, which is right, right here, the part that like you, the pocket. This is the pocket, all right? And so this is the hand pocket, and then this is the thumb pocket, all right? And so there's a little fold line here. And so you need one piece of fabric and then one piece of batting or something heat resistant that is only halfway right up there. And um, if you're making more than one pot holder, you could cut, um, you know, just the whole one and then cut it in half, you know, for the this piece right here. So, so that is your back of your hand. And then same thing here. You need a half piece and the pocket. And then we have um, the, the, the part that goes against the pot and the part that goes against your hand. So this needs two of this palm side here in fabric, one that's gonna go against the pot and one that's gonna go against your hand. And two, I'm gonna use two pieces of the heat resistant stuff because why not, right? I think I can handle sewing all that. And then you need the shorter side too. So this is the same type of idea and it gets sewn together like this, right? And so you can see that little contour. So once that's sewn together, it has this natural tendency to wanna sit like this. It's much more comfortable. All right, let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna pull my pattern pieces away here first. You're also gonna need two pieces of elastic and it shows on the pattern what to cut those. So I've already um, cut mine, they're right here. You also need a little bit of binding and I'm just gonna use this pre-made stuff that I had sitting around and it's in gingham, which is awesome, right? Gingham is like awesome. Um, I already have, my, I still have my binding from last time. All right, so here's my two pieces of elastic. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay this little half piece here on the circle and there's a little subtle point there and if you can't really see the point you can also notch this fold line right here which is right here it's this little subtle point right here you can notch that that's the fold line just don't notch it too deep and make sure you get it nice and straight i'm gonna fold it in half there and i'm gonna sew a little casing that's gonna fit my elastic. My elastic is only three eighths of an inch. See that? So it's pretty narrow. So I'm just gonna do it like, let's see, a little over half inch, like almost five eighths. 
Don't have to backstitch if you don't want. We got a little, oh, I got really wiggly on that one. <laughs> All right, let's put this one on here. You can kind of tell if you don't mark this and you get it kind of wonky, you know, there is notches on this um, other side too, so you can line those up. It won't lay right, so you, you can, you can uh, figure that out though. You'll, you'll notice it. I remember last time partway through, I looked at a different line on my throat plate. All right, I'm gonna get my loop turner. This thing right here has a little hook and I'm gonna stick it inside here and I'm gonna pull my elastic through. I just hook my elastic in there. I'm gonna get it started a little bit there. Yeah, like that. And then once the elastic is kind of peeking right out there, I'm gonna grab it with the machine and stitch it. And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna pull it, make sure it doesn't twist. And I kind of pull it past like this so I can let go of the loop turner. I really gently let it slide in there. You don't want to lose it. <laughs> and there we go. Now we have our little elastic pocket there. So that's this one right there. Trim this little thread. All right, we'll do our other elastic that hopefully the scrunching sh uh, covers up my wonky sewing. Actually would like, I think it's this side I want to face up. Yeah, that's the side I want facing up. I sort of strategically cut my cats. I'm thinking my sister will really like this one. Actually, let's put this. I'm gonna put the loop turner on top of the batting on the side that I want facing up. Yeah, I think my sister will like this because um, she got a cat in the last year and then they just got another kitten and they're just, they're having such a blast with their cats right now. It's really sweet because they lost their dog last year. And so, um, you know, you know how it is when you get, you know, lose a pet and then you get another pet and they're just all falling in love again. I just love it. So I love all the funny cat stuff they're sending. And the fact that the, two, the new one and the um, other cat that they already had is really bonding. So sweet. I have some little like ugly threads here. So I'm just kind of pulling them here and making sure, yeah, that, that, that'll work. And then I'm also gonna kinda go boing, 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 like this and kinda get those gathers evenly distributed. And let's leave, yeah, see all these little threads right here. Let's just get that to the seam allowance. I just threaded my machine. I did sew it a little bit, but that's what it looks like to me, is that little extra. All right, so I see, I think that's how it's gonna go, just like that. All right, now we're gonna assemble the bottom. All right, so we're gonna take one each of these and one each of these and we're gonna lay them just like this. All right, same with these. The palm like this and like this. I This really could have used a little bit of ironing. All right, so now we have these two together and we're gonna put these right sides together and sew the seam a quarter of an inch. Line it up. It's not a hard curve to sew because this curve is the same to one another. All right, now, um, if you're using a really thick fabric, you might find top stitching this to be really tricky. When I used that like Cuisinart oven mitt, it was really thick, especially with the silicone in there. This is pretty thin. So I think what I'm gonna do is open it up like this and I'm gonna stitch on either side of the seam. I think that'll be nice and flat. The fabric I'm using inside this like batting looking stuff is called Insulbrite. And it is a heat insulating fabric to protect your hand. You can use it to make ironing boards or um, other things that you wanna protect against heat. In other words, it's not something you would put in the microwave because <laughs> it is metal in there. So, all right, now same thing. We're gonna do this seam. Oops, right sides together. Like this. This is a little lightweight canvas here, but I still think it's um, not too heavy to open up and stitch on either side as well. Get it nice and flat. 
It's a little awkward. I, I think that the seam flipped over in one spot under there, but this is on the inside of the mitt. We're not too worried about it. We're just trying to get something that's like an even thickness. You can see this is very wavy now. See that? And that's because it wants to sit like this. See? Boop, boop. Like that. All right, so now we're gonna put these wrong sides together, just like this. And if you wanna tack this in a few places, like I'm gonna tack it here. Um, I'm gonna tack it on this side before I tack it in the centers on the curve. Getting curves centered is always tricky, right? So now we're gonna find the center here. The single notch means that it's the shorter side. The double notch is the larger side. All right, let's see. Am I getting this lined up? These wrinkles aren't really helping me. All right, we'll just put a little tack there. When you have these kinds of things where there's an outer fabric, an inner fabric, and a lining fabric, and, and if you don't make all the pattern pieces specific to the place of the fabric, then they're not gonna line up. Like no amount of your perfect sewing is going to make all this line up because there is, there, it just doesn't work because the lining is the smallest layer. The inner layer there is, is in between the size of the in lining and the outer layer. And if all of these are cut the same size, well, they're just, they're gonna be a little bit off and that's just how it is. Sometimes, you know, if I were doing a job that was paid or, um, depending on what the product was, I would engineer pattern pieces for every single layer, right? But even in my last business, I didn't. I had the same pattern piece for all, and we knew how to adjust as we went. It, sometimes that's faster because you don't have to keep track of so many pattern pieces. Because if there was a pattern piece for the lining, the inner, and the outer, just for this, there'd be, there'd be six pattern pieces just for this. <laughs> that's just too much to keep track of, right? So, all right, so I'm gonna put this on the inside. And so I'm gonna line up this larger one to the larger side and there should be some notches up here. So you just wanna line those up. And if you don't see your notches, just make sure that you're lining this up equal and so you can line up this elastic edge to the seam right there. And um, if you want, you can stitch all the way around, tack it down, because we're gonna bind the outer edge. Make sure we get all the layers because there's a lot of them now. All right. And you don't want to miss one. Okay. I'm going to use my awl to kind of tame this piece of elastic here. See how it wants to like. Uh, snap inside of itself there. I just had to pull it over. I did get a little tuck, but maybe I can finesse that with the binding. All right, now we'll put this one on. I ended up making the medium size because the, usually I make the small for me, um, my mom, my sister. This, I made the medium because I was like, you know what? Um, there's a lot of medium or smalls in the world in our, our family. So I figured maybe the, the medium could be helpful maybe to her husband. <laughs> Ooh, this one isn't matching as well. Oh yeah, there we go. Once I pulled out that elastic piece, it really helped. It's a little off. It's a little off on that side. All right, so look at, check this out, see? And once this gets broken in, especially when you kind of, I keep mine folded like this for a while, it kind of breaks in this little seam. It really is great. And I mean, it just stays on. You can grab the pot. Um, you've got a little bit more dexterity. You can even engineer this a little further if you want. You're like, look, I don't need the thumb to be that big on this side. You know, you could get rid of some of this fabric. But you know, if you have a left-handed person, they're going to need that space over there. So just remember that. And, um, and remember, this is the medium. So this is my hand and this one's a little too small or too big. So if you aren't a very large person, you might wanna make the smaller size. So, um, all right, so now we're ready to bind. So I'm just gonna trim this perimeter edge a little bit. Remember, I like nice, even seam allowances. I won't trim it a whole lot. I'm just gonna trim some of this stuff like that and like this. And let's make a little loop to hang this up with too. All right, and so I've got this gingham. I 
I don't have much left, but isn't it amazing? <laughs> let's see, I think I have plenty to do this. So let's see, how long do I want my loop here? This is probably in, in the directions. I'm a big fan of making the loop large because it's such a bummer when a loop is so fiddly that you just get frustrated trying to hang it up really quick and you're trying to like, you know, juggle hot things in your kitchen, right? So um, I get it. <laughs> All right, so this time I'll, I'll sew this without, you know, instead of like pretending like I'm binding it, we'll use my loop turner since it's out. So I'm gonna put this right sides together. Just sew it uh, like down the middle or a quarter inch seam allowance, something like that. And then I'll use this little loop turner to turn it right side out, put it back so I don't lose it. When I had a machine that faced the wall, I just always had it on a push pin on the wall in front of me. Now I face you. <laughs> okay, so if I wanted to put a little magnet in there, remember my magnets are really tiny, the ones that I just happened to have. Um, I would just probably, Maybe I had, would have closed one end before I turned this and then I would have put the magnet in there and then just sewed across. And then I would have made the, the like thing like this long and it was just stuck out the, the seam right here and then I, I hang that up. That's how it is at my house because it's on the toast oven, which is perfect because there's no place to hang anything over there. So that just works for us. Um, and then on our um, oven area, like the real oven in the cooktop, it's like a island of just that. And so the previous owners had a hook on the side. And so I made a nice large loop on our other one. We have two and I put that there. So, all right, so I'm gonna put this here at the center. And now we're ready to bind. I'm gonna start from this side, like I always do, right? From the bad side or wrong side, bad side. Why did I say bad side? <laughs> I'm going to fold back one edge just like this and I'm just going to pick like right here. I'm not going to pick this like, you know, high drama intersection right there. Let's just pick somewhere down here and we're going to sew it on a quarter inch. You thought Vlogmas was going to be so relaxing and here I have you sewing binding on everything. <laughs> I imagine you could sew these, this pocket to here, right sides together and turn it. If you add a little seam allowance to the perimeter, your raw edge would show right here in this little window. But you know, you're fine with that. You wouldn't have to bind. I don't think everybody has to bind. I just think if you get into it, you realize how useful it is, especially for accessories um, and for finishing and stuff. It's just a really handy thing to be able to have kind of, you know, the feather in your cap type of thing. All right, so I'm getting to the beginning. I have this fingernail that really wants to rip off so it keeps catching on things. It's really annoying. All right, so there's my of them at there. So now I'm gonna now I'm gonna really trim it, make sure that this seam allowance is nice and even. Make sure that I caught all layers because there's a lot of them in here. Maybe you didn't put two layers of the insole bright in this hand part, you know, you might not have to do that. Um, maybe mine's over and above. Let's see here. Get around. Remember, don't do it too small. We need the seam allowance to fill up the binding. It'll look a lot nicer. Even if it's not sewn great, it'll look a lot nicer. Oh, I just dumped all of that on my reindeer ears. <laughs> all right, now let's pull it to this top side here. All right, give it a good tug. It always helps. Give it a good tug like that. All right. All right, and now um, I'm gonna start like right behind this little spot. So I always get this spot, this little like first thing here uh, turned under, and then I'm gonna come back and turn this one under here. And then I come to here, right behind it, and I start sewing. And let's bring down the camera a little bit. The, it's so dark because I have the, the light off for the, for the Christmas light. All right, here we go. 
Now this feels a little bit awkward. Like I, I'll tell you that just so you know, like, ooh, this feels a little bit awkward, Ceramy. It really does. It is a lot of layers and you have the elastic kind of pulling a little bit. You have the stiffness of the batting. Um, it's a curve. There is a lot going on here. So just focus on catching all of your layers when you first attach the binding and you know, trimming that seam down to a nice even seam allowance. And then when you do this step, just make sure that little fold edge goes just past that first seam so it covers it up. And then, you know, try and stitch to the right of that seam and everything will look good on the other side. If not, it's an oven mitt. The first time you accidentally dip it in cake batter, it's all over anyway, right? And this is, the other thing about this is it's fully washable. When I attach this binding, I feel like I gently pulled and I just didn't mention it because I do it so unconsciously now. And that really helps because then you don't have a lot of extra length on the binding because you kind of made it a little smaller. There we go. I run out of labels, so I haven't been using any. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Very cute. Ooh. Oh, look at this poor little kitty. <laughs> That's really funny. There we go. Make a great puppet too. <laughs> I love this little thing. Works so good. I think that, yeah, I would probably over it a little, engineer it a little bit more if I ever kind of opened this file back up and address some things, but for the most part, it works really good. And before you give it away or use it for a while, just store it like this for a bit, kind of folded to kind of break in this curve and that articulation so that it's ergonomic for your hand. Cool. All right. Well, that's my oven mitt. Definitely not done in five minutes like the closet core one, <laughs> but hey, you can give that one to people and keep this one for you. All right. All right. Let's write a letter to Santa. Look at I told you I dropped all my stuff on like it landed right on top of my antler ears just perfectly. We cannot tarnish the antler ears. Right? Because they're they're working. <laughs> okay. I'm actually starting to have trouble coming up with these dear Santas, so please help me out, you know? Dear Santa, this is working though, so we're not stopping yet. Dear Santa, what do I want? What do I want? So recently I had to buy some outerwear fabric, like polar fleece for a project. I feel like I'm really good at shopping for that stuff. I worked in the outerwear industry. I learned all the places that you can get it. I do have a favorite place I like to go. It doesn't always have the best selection, but it has the best quality stuff because I happen to know for sure that they get their fabrics from manufacturers because we used to sell ours to them. And that place was the rain shed. So if you're ever looking for outerwear materials in the United States, the rain shed. The caveat is that they sold the company in the last few years. I don't have as much experience with it. So far, so good, right? But like I said, they don't always have everything I'm looking for. Um, and I have to use other companies. I've used two lately. One in Colorado, wasn't too thrilled with it. I just used one in Seattle and it's good quality fabric, I got it. But here's the deal, this is where I'm going. I feel like with all of these companies, anytime I find someone that's selling like outerwear materials, like I'm talking like, um, you know, fabrics that you would find from like Patagonia or North Face or something like that, Columbia, Adidas, maybe not Adidas, but um, Columbia or something like that. Things that are like in the um, camping and outerwear, not fitness apparel. So I'm not talking about running, triathlons, swimming, stuff like that, right? Totally different genre. I'm talking about outerwear. I find there's this common thing between all of these outerwear companies, and that is that they're a little bit picky. <laughs> they, not the rain shed, the rain shed's pretty chill, but like I said, they're just kind of beholden to what fabrics they've been able 
to buy from manufacturers and what the manufacturers are giving them. So um, the others are like, wham, you must buy this many yards or here's a $4 surcharge. It's like no other fabric places really do this. And I feel like anytime someone's a little bit salty over doing business, it's just really sucks the fun out of it, doesn't it? And I get it. Like, I remember being one of those sellers where I was just like, everybody must pay shipping because shipping is so expensive and it is and stuff. And you, you, you have to figure out your way with that, right? What you're comfortable with it and then stop complaining about it because nobody wants to hear about it. <laughs> and um, that was my experience recently. I bought the fabric from them and they had, they added a $4 charge, just a $4 charge. So, you know, $4, it's like, come on, you know? There's a place in Canada I really, really wanna order from, but the shipping is a lot because it's, it's a different country and all that. So I haven't had anything yet that I can do that with. Like this would have been the perfect project to order from them, but I needed it right away. And um, yeah, anyway, anyway, Dear Santa, please give us more reasonable <laughs> outerwear fabric companies. I get it. Like they, these fa these fabrics are they're technical, right? So they go in the in the outerwear world. They go out of fashion um, really quickly because the science behind them changes so frequently that they um, they want to stay on top of it, right? Well, these little companies, they really don't have that kind of like, um, they don't really, they can't, they can't really worry about that because they don't have those many options. They're not buying wholesale from a lot of these big, big, big fabric companies, right? So um, I get, I get that. I get that there's like, I know it's complicated and I, and not enough sewers are sewing things in outerwear. It's a very specific thing. There's just not a lot of options, <sighs> but I don't want to see extra charges or like you must buy whole yards only. I don't need four yards of this, <laughs> you know, reasonable outerwear fabric companies. I love sewing outerwear. I love sewing outerwear, and I wish they were more knowledge knowledgeable. And I wish they would be more knowledgeable. I will say this one in Canada has really got my attention. I feel like they, they kind of know their stuff and they're getting some really good stuff in. So I just need to explore them a little more. So yeah, I've actually gone head to head with a couple of these people when I've said, hey, is this this or that? And then they act like I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, well, actually, I do know what I'm talking about with this kind of thing so <laughs> and I don't want to say that I'm just like I just try and you know I feel like this is a women's thing to do we end up playing to I shouldn't even say this but we, we end up playing to their like vanity to get them to you know finally you throw them breadcrumbs to get them to you you know and it's like yeah 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 oh yeah right so would that be like this and then they're like, yeah, 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 that's, that's what that would be. You know, you have to kind of feed them the answers so that they feel superior. Yeah, don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone said today that my Santa letters are a little ranty or they can turn ranty, but they like that. I'm not trying to be ranty. It's a selfish time of the year, right? It's actually not a selfish time of the year. It's just the Santa letter that we're being selfish with. Anyway, exoceramy, let's just end this. I spent more time talking about what I want from Santa th this time than, than making a really cute oven mitt. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's gonna be a link in the description to this pattern on my website. You can find it for free. Enjoy and um, I'll see you next time. All right, okay, wait, my mouse. Oh, no, I can just, no, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I gotta do this, I gotta do my mouse. Okay, okay, bye. <laughs>